Hey, what's up everybody, Retro Gaming Guy here. Today I'm gonna show you guys around the Dell Optiplex 3010, and I'm gonna show you what the performance is like on here when using it for retro video game emulation. So we're going to take an external tour of the PC, then we're gonna dive into it. We're going to use Botticera to navigate through a bunch of different retro video game collections and games, and you'll see exactly what the performance is like on here and what its strengths and weaknesses are on here. So let's take a closer look at the Dell Optiplex 3010. <clears throat> All right, so here we have the Dell Optiplex 3010. This has 3.2 gigahertz. This is a Core i5. Currently has, uh, it actually has a sticker for Windows 7 on it, but it's got Windows 10 on this one. It's been upgraded a little bit on here, and this has eight gigabyte RAM. So inside here, currently I have a thousand gigabyte hard drive, which we're actually gonna swap out. And, but first and foremost, we're gonna go through some of the features on here. So this particular PC does have a disk drive here. It's also DVD. So over here we have our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have a port for audio. We have two USBs on the front, and then of course our power right up here. So if we flip this over to the side view here, you can see this is how we're going to access our hard drive. Really easy to get in here. This is actually one of my favorite PCs to get inside of because we don't have to deal with screws or anything like that. We just have this little um, lever right here. We just pull that back, it unlocks over here in the corner and it goes down just like that. Everything is laid out beautifully within here. So down here we have our hard drive caddy. Really easy to access this. We literally just push down on this lever right here and it hinges right out like that. So it's easy to access everything. Easy to access the disk drive as well here. We have all the um, connections and everything that we're going to need really easily accessible. And just the overall layout within is really spread out so we can maximize airflow. We obviously have an excellent fan on here, good size, very large. Um, also one down here as well, which you can see in the corner right next to our hard drive. So I'm gonna close this up for now because I wanna show you guys around the backside of this. So I'm gonna turn this around here. All right, so the most important thing on the backside, in my opinion, is the fact that we have HDMI output here. So we have the HDMI port. A lot of people ask this about older PCs, if it's HDMI or if it just has VGA. In this case, we have both, but I'm not a big fan of connecting through VGA just because a lot of modern day TVs don't have the availability of you know, utilizing this connection right here. So the fact that we have HDMI is great. If you do have VGA though on a PC, you can always convert this over to HDMI. It's just another connection or adapter that you do need to connect. So HDMI makes it really easy. Connect a regular HDMI cable directly from this port right here to your TV or monitor and you're good to go. Now we obviously have our ethernet connection up here. We have our power supply connection down here, some audio connections that we can utilize down here. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six USBs in the back, which is awesome because, you know, with using this for emulation gaming, you might want to use wired in um, controllers, or you may want to use USB receiver controllers, or obviously you want to have a keyboard connected. You want to oftentimes have a mouse as well. Just if you're jumping into Botticera, for example, and you're doing some changes within the file structure there, or, you know, adding ROMs, removing ROMs, whatever you need to do on the backside of Botticera, you're going to want to have multiple things connected. So I think just having this many options is awesome to have. And then again, on the front, we did have some as well, but on the back side, it's really nice to be able to hide those. And of course, in the front, we have these two USB connections as well. What I typically use these for, since they're really accessible, is whatever I'm planning to use, you know, right away. So if I'm using like a PlayStation style um, USB wired controller, I'll go ahead and connect that right in the front because then it's readily available for me if I need to disconnect it or switch things up. And then I'll put the more permanent connections on the back side. So we're going to open this up. I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to take out the 1000 gigabyte hard drive and I'm going to replace it with this Seagate Barracuda 2TB hard drive. This has Botticera already put together on it. I put together a 2TB build of Botticera on here. So all I need to do is actually connect this and boot up the PC and it's going to automatically boot to Botticera and I should have all of my games and collections ready to go right from there. All right, so in terms of removing this again, the levers right here, just pull that towards you. The whole thing comes down like that. There's five different connections. They just sit in place. You can remove this or you can keep it right in place like that. 
In this case, there's really no reason to actually remove it, and then I'll just lift it right back up and click it into place when I'm done. So we have this lever right here, which connects directly to our hard drive caddy. All you do is just push that down and it pops out like so. Once I get it down a little ways, I'm just gonna take these two cable connections here and disconnect those. There's no way that you can confuse these. One's large, one's small. So no confusion there whatsoever. I love that because it's simple. You know, we don't have to worry about all these different cables hanging and remembering which ones to connect to. It's just the two options that we have here. There is this little one in the middle there, but you're gonna use the end one in this case. So here's our hard drive that came with this. All we have to do is just pull back here. There's these little tabs, one, two, three, four, and we just pull back on those and we can slide this right out, just like that. So I'll set that aside. I'm gonna grab my 2TB Barracuda. And all you wanna do here is, they don't necessarily connect the exact same way, just make sure you have your connections over here on the left-hand side. You want them to line up with the little cutout here on the caddy so you can easily access those. So in here we have pins. You can see one right there, another one right there. They're connected on these tabs and they're just gonna slide into the holes on the four corners of your hard drive. And if you're connecting an SSD, it'll be a little bit different, but uh, same idea, same cable connections here. Your SSD is just not going to fit in here. You may have to secure it a different way. Oftentimes they make a um, caddy that works for the SSDs and just slides into the hard drive caddy. So I'm just going to line up those holes here. It's a little different fit than what we had in there before, but seems to be connecting into place. Have to, it's a little bit wider, I think. So just had to pull that tab a little bit more, but it's ready to go. And you can see right here, we have our connections readily available. So there's two little feet here and there's actually arrows that show you exactly where they are. You're just going to put those in place down here and you'll rock this right back in and it'll click in place. I like to make the connection first just so I'm not fumbling around. So small connection is going to go on the small connection down here. And then the larger one's going to go directly above that. So no confusing these, they only fit in one spot. All right, just make sure that they're secure. Oftentimes when people boot these up, and they run into issues where Botticera is not booting up, it's usually because these aren't secure. They'll go into place and then they'll kind of, you have to push them just a little bit more and they'll click into place. So should be good to go here. And that just rocks in. We have that lever again, just push it down slightly and it will lock right into place. You can see there, nice and secure, nothing loose or anything like that. So these five tabs down here, just line them up on the frame rock this whole thing forward, pushes in and clicks into place just like that. So we're gonna connect our power supply cable right here to the back side, and we are going to also connect our HDMI cable. This goes directly to my monitor over to the back side here into that HDMI port, and we are going to fire this up. All right, so we just booted up Botticera. You can see I can scroll through my different collections. Now, what I should have mentioned before is that the front of our Dell Optiplex 3010 is actually a speaker as well. And what you may find when you first boot up Botticera is that the audio comes through that as opposed to going through the HDMI cable to your TV or monitor. That's likely how you want your audio to go through. So if you do need to go in and make adjustments, I'll put a link in the description of this video that is a full tutorial on how to actually set up your audio. It's really a simple process. It takes a matter of probably two minutes or so to get your audio synced up and working with your TV. TV or monitor. It doesn't happen to everybody. Everybody's individual setup is going to differ ever so slightly, but it's literally as simple as just hitting the start button on your gamepad controller, dropping down to your main menu, and then jumping into your system settings, and then coming all the way down here to audio output. Here it's set to auto. Usually what you want to do is you just want to go to the option that makes most sense for you. So in this case, I'm doing HDMI. So we're just going to go down here and we're going to select HDMI. Just like that, that's all we need to do. And then from here, you'll just back out and you'll actually reboot. And you can see that you get a prompt across the top just reminding you that you do need to reboot. So I'm going to just actually do this. You probably don't even need to jump over to that other tutorial. If you're having 
issues beyond that simple fix right there and you're still running into some problems, then that video tutorial that I did is a little more involved. It will walk you through some additional steps you need to take if you run into issues. But for this particular PC, if you're using exactly what I'm using, the Optiplex 3010, this should do it for you as long as you're connecting over to your audio via that HDMI cable. So I'm just gonna reboot real quick and then we're gonna continue and jump into a couple different gameplay demos. All right, so here we are fully booted up into Bodicera. I made that audio adjustment and the audio is now coming out of my TV rather than out of the Dell Optiplex 3010 itself. So we're gonna jump into a couple different collections on here. I'll show you guys how smooth emulation is for the collections that we jump into. So first and foremost, I wanna jump into some Nintendo 64 and I wanna jump into, let's go into Mario Kart. Actually, you know what? Let's go into Mario Kart 64, take my word for it, works incredibly well. Um, but Cruising USA is a game that is notorious for glitches and screen tearing. It's just an absolute mess. If you were to dive into this on, say, a Raspberry Pi 4 running RetroPie, even though the majority of the games within this collection run perfectly fine on the Raspberry Pi 4 running RetroPie. This game is just much more demanding than a lot of the other ones. So we're gonna jump into this game. I wanna show you guys how this one performs using the Dell Optiplex 3010. And again, I haven't done anything to this Dell Optiplex. This everything within here is stock and standard. So you can see how smooth the cutscenes are here too. That's always a glitchy screen tearing mess in most cases for most emulation platforms. And um, you know, either handhelds or full on PCs that you're using this on. So here, everything's been smooth. We're gonna jump into the game. Just trying to get used to this game so far, but uh, I'm using a PlayStation style controller rather than a N64 just because I can use that on all these collections. So bear with me, my steering is not great on this using this controller, but uh, game is running incredibly well. All right, you've seen enough of my terrible driving, but you can see that the game is running perfectly. I'm just absolutely terrible with this particular controller. Generally, I'm actually pretty good at this game, but for some reason, the analog sticks, you can see I'm just overcorrecting like crazy. Uh, I don't have a good feel for the steering on this game with this particular controller, but hey, I'm back in second place. I'll, uh, I'll take it. Let's end on a good note here. So I'm going to hit my hotkey button, jump out of this, and let's go into it. While I have you here, might as well check out one more game within this collection. Let me see. We should probably jump into, since I talked about Mario Kart uh, 64, let's jump into Mario Kart 64, and I'll show you guys how that performs as well. It's easy to start up into this game. won't take long at all. All right, so here we go, Mario Kart 64. Just chose Mario and I went with the first race here. So I gotta remember which button on this controller accelerates me, oh, there we go. For those using a PlayStation style controller, it is the X button. Whatever 
everything's running extremely well on here. And you can actually do some adjustments to your um, game within Botticera too, which is cool to actually smooth things and um, just improve the overall graphics of your game because this one can be pretty pixelated um, by, uh, by default settings. So you can go in there and make some adjustments. I actually have a video on how to do that as well with Botticera. So if you're interested in that, um, I'll uh, put a link to that in the description of this video as well. So really smooth on here, no screen tearing, no issues, no lags, delays, or anything like that. So really happy with the performance on the Optiplex 3010. So we'll jump out of this game and let's jump into another collection now. Let's back out of N64. All right, so we should probably jump into Nintendo GameCube. Now this is a few notches up in terms of requirements for emulating this collection, but in my experience, everything has gone extremely well on here. So let me find a game that we could jump into to test this out. I'm trying to find something that I'm not absolutely terrible with. Um, you know what would be a good choice? NFL Blitz. And oh, there we are. We'll jump into NFL Blitz 2003. A lot going on in these games. Obviously, a lot of characters on the screen at one time. So we'll test this out with this collection and um, you know we'll get an idea of what the performance is like on here. All right, so I just chose quick play here. So I jumped in to the first available options there. I didn't even really pick my team. So we're just gonna test out what the performance is like on here. Now we're in 4-3 aspect ratio. You can make adjustments to stretch this if you wanted to. I just left it as it would have been by default, but stretching it for this collection shouldn't be a problem at all. Comes the kick. And this game is underway. Time to get dirty. Just got to figure out what my turbo button is on here, but no screen tearing, no issues of any kind from what I can see. All right, we got a first down. I got to figure out what my uh, turbo button is on here. That's the only downside to emulation. You oftentimes have to figure out what your, uh, okay, it's the um, R2. You have to figure out what the um, corresponding buttons are since it's not the controller that's intended to be used with this. All right, so we got the turbo out now. We get the first down, we did, all right. Everything's going really smoothly here. Let me see if I can get a touchdown. If I can get a touchdown, we'll jump out of this game and test out another one. And we got the touchdown. All right, so again, everything really smooth on here. Let me jump out of this title and let's find another one. Oh, uh, you know what? Soul Calibur 2 would be even better to check out with because Soul Calibur is also notorious for screen tearing and um, lags and delays if you don't have uh, enough power behind your PC to actually properly emulate the collection and also the game itself. So um, I think this would be even better than jumping into a racing game. All right, so I haven't made any adjustments to emulating this game. This is just the standard stock sort of setup on here from Botticera. No adjustments have been made to this to better the performance in any way. All right, so let's see what we got. So I did see a slight lag there, but um, yeah, there's like a really minor. Um, yeah, all right, so. This one's pushing it a little bit, but overall, I mean, it's still playable. I do see like a little, I'm, I'm just, you can hear me tapping the uh, X button here. 
just going crazy trying to kind of overwhelm it. So we did see slight little um, glitch there. I'm not even sure if it was a, might have been a lag. We're gonna, we'll probably see it again here. Let me skip ahead. Like it's the slightest little bit there. There were a few that um, pushed it a lot more. Yeah, so I'm not getting any lags really. It seems like it just kind of, yeah. Definitely seems to be on point there. Let me do one more. I just want to gauge this correctly. So rather than just like going crazy, I'm going to try to just do track my movements to see if there is a slight delay here. Yeah, it seems to be moving fine. And I, I'm struggling to recreate the issue. That's me not knowing what the buttons are because um, when he's kind of looking like he's glitching. Yeah, so there was a slight little stutter there at the end too. Um, but certainly playable, so I wouldn't... I would say that this, again, is going to be where you kind of max out with this PC in terms of emulation, but I wouldn't say that it's really a problem. Let's see if I can push him off the edge there. All right, well, we got a perfect. So obviously if I got a perfect here, it's really not bad at all, but did see some slight little hiccups there, but they were slight. So we'll jump out of here. And since we did see some hiccups in here, let's go into one more game. I actually don't have, um, uh, maybe we could jump into Sonic Riders. I haven't played that since it probably came out. I was gonna say, let's jump into Double Dash, but I forgot I didn't add Double Dash to this particular build yet. So I have to do that because that's a classic game for GameCube but this one should be good indication as well. All right, so I just chose the first track and I chose Sonic as my character for this test. All right, so obviously a lot of movement here, a lot's going on on screen. I'm not seeing any issues at all. Now, I'm not great at this game. Again, I haven't played this since it came out. I remember actually when it came out. So I anticipate getting dead last on here, but I'm just tracking movement. I wanna see if we see any issues with, you know, this rapid uh, rate that we're going at here. And every movement that I do with my analog stick seems to be perfect, so I'm not seeing any issues there either. All right, I'm going to get out of here before I embarrass myself, but everything on here for the most part, again, seems to be good. We did see a couple little hiccups there with Soul Calibur 2, but they were super minor, so I'm not at all worried about those. So let's back out of this collection, and let's dive into... Now, we might be tough. Let me jump into Wii, though, and let's see if we're able to do anything within here. I don't think that we likely will be able to. I don't have a, um, I don't have my dolphin bar set up right now, so I'm looking for something that I can play with just your standard um, gamepad controller, which I already have hooked up. So let's go into Mario Kart Wii. This one's going to be pretty tough to to uh, emulate, so I'm not anticipating this working at all, especially with the um, super minor hiccups we saw in GameCube. I think this is just gonna be a little bit too much. Mario time. All right, so we're definitely seeing some lags here. see how the gameplay is though. The cutscenes seem to be a bit demanding there. 
Gameplay is not bad though. Um, I definitely feel like we're cruising pretty slow here. Now, I did pick a um, slower race. Uh, I definitely feel like it's a little slow here. Playable though. You can see the movement when the, um, I'm not sure which power-up that was that zoomed by, but it zoomed by a little glitchy, so definitely feel like this is kind of stressing the um, PC out a little bit, just a little bit more demanding than it um, probably should be. So I would, you know, going off of that, I would think that Wii is probably going to be really touch and go. It just depends on how picky you are. Like this is just, I went with the 100cc on this one rather than 50, but not 150. So um, we're definitely going slower than we should be going on here. Uh, and that may be an issue with the ROM, but I don't think so. So let me back out of this game. All right, so we're jumping into NBA Jam now for Wii. And I actually just connected my Wii remote because I believe that's a requirement here. I don't think we can play this particular game with a PlayStation style controller. So we're going to test out what this one is like. It's in the game. Tonight's matchup, it's the LA Lakers versus the Sacramento Kings. Here's the tip. Pass up high. Some kind of abuse center shelter for his defender to sleep at tonight. Can he finish? Denied! Fades, fires, and shoots. And he gets the friendly roll. Uh. Evan from two point. Good aggressive defense there. Head fake. Kobe. Evans with the rejection. Uh. Open shot. Nails the long two. With the soft touch. That's an easy two. The Lakers down by four. Uh. Nice pass. Gasol takes it. Come on. Uh. Here's Evans. Misses. Still in possession. Kobe for three. No good. Just flailing away with those elbows. Here's Landry. Gets a lucky All right, so the emulation performance there was actually really good. Much better than I was anticipating. You saw a slight little stutter here and there, but nothing that made this unplayable or unenjoyable in any way. So... I'm not going to dive into some of these other more classic collections here. Actually, I'll, I'll jump into Sega Saturn because that is notoriously hard to emulate. But with the fact that we're into Wii and GameCube, I know for a fact that Sega Saturn is going to be absolutely perfect. So we will jump in here, though, really quickly. And let's go into... I want to go into a racing game. I want to find something that you know definitely pushes this. So let's go into Daytona USA. And we'll see exactly what the performance is like on here.
All right, so again, just like I thought, Sega Saturn runs extremely well, flawless in fact. Uh, no lags, no delays, no screen tearing, just super smooth emulation across the board. All right, so we jumped in here. We took a look at a bunch of different collections and a bunch of different games for those collections. And I can honestly say that this PC exceeded my expectations. I honestly, the first time that I grabbed this, I didn't think that it was going to be able to go past uh, PlayStation and Sega Saturn. I knew it would get, you know, N64 and Super Nintendo and all those earlier games, Dreamcast. Uh, but I didn't think it would be able to take on GameCube. I just didn't think there was going to be enough power, but there is. And the GameCube experience on here is really good. That's not to say that you're not going to have, you know, a little hiccup here and there in gameplay. We saw that when we jumped into Soul Calibur 2, but it was a one or two time sort of occurrence. And I actually played that game quite a bit on this PC. I didn't put the entire length that I played in this video because I want to keep things as short as possible. I know this video is not necessarily short by any means. So I wanted to, you know, cut down everything as much as possible. So I tried to play multiple matches in Soul Calibur 2 to kind of recreate that issue, and I could not recreate it on my end. So uh, that leads me to believe that you will experience like a little one-off sort of um, glitch or, you know, I wouldn't even call that really a glitch. I would just call it like a little hiccup in the uh, gameplay there. So you may run into that here and there, but it's certainly nothing that's going to deter you from playing GameCube games on the Dell Optiplex 3010. Now we jumped into Nintendo Wii and this was a collection, you use pretty much the same emulator for Wii and GameCube, but Wii is much newer in terms of when those games were released. So you have more advanced graphics. Everything across the board is just kicked up a few notches. So I didn't expect Wii to work, but Wii actually works pretty well. Now I did see that there were some slight issues here and there in like cutscenes, um, And then we jumped into NBA Jam and it was the Wii version of NBA Jam. Obviously, I want to just make sure that people aren't thinking the original NBA Jam. So we jumped into that one, and I noticed like little hiccups as I as I put it before. It's not like screen tearing. It's not a lag in the gameplay. It's just like a little slight glitch uh, here and there. But it was again nothing that would deter me from playing that game in there. And honestly, if you if I wasn't looking for those things because I'm jumping into these games testing with the hopes of noticing any sort of discrepancies or issues in there. If I wasn't looking for them, I probably wouldn't have even picked up on it, to be perfectly honest. And the gameplay is just that smooth. So I think this is an excellent PC for literally everything from early arcade, NES, Super Nintendo, Atari, of course, um, all the way through Dreamcast, N64, PlayStation, um, GameCube, and then Wii is where it starts to, you know, you start to see a little pushback in terms of everything not being 100% perfect, but again, super minor here. Uh, you may run into some issues with some more advanced games in Nintendo Wii emulation that do cause experiences that aren't perfect, but Again, for the most part, this PC offers uh, a lot of bang for the buck. This is a budget-friendly PC, which is also why I chose to use a hard drive in here as opposed to an SSD. When choosing between hard drives and SSDs, I always try to steer more towards SSDs in most cases, but with a situation like this where I'm trying to do a more budget-friendly setup, I chose hard drives because they are a fraction of the cost. And you know there, there are some shortcomings in some areas, but for the collections that we're diving into here in this video on this particular PC, I did find it to be um, very much aligned with the experience of an SSD. Slightly slower load times, uh, especially when initially booting into Botticera, but all in all, still a great experience. And again, for that budget-friendly price point, I think it's a home run. So um, just full disclosure, I paid, I think about $59 or so for the 4TB hard drive that I used on here. Now I got an, ex an insane deal on this PC, but in all honesty, I took a gamble on it. I really rolled the dice because I bought it untested. I paid only $12 for it, came with the power supply cable and everything, but it was untested. So usually untested means that somebody actually did test it and found that there was an issue with it and they're listing it as untested just to kind of protect themselves. In this case, it was untested and I got lucky. It performed perfectly. There were no issues whatsoever. It was super clean inside and out. So, you know, again, it was just an absolutely uh, amazing, um, you know, bit of luck that I got this at that price point. Typically, you're going to find these from 
anywhere from 30 bucks if you're buying locally and you don't have to deal with shipping all the way up to about a buck 10 or so um buck 10 would be like if they're brand new and um you know obviously they're older but they're still unused to some extent or they're open box as they would call it uh so 110 is usually what i'd see on like amazon and then again anywhere from that like 35 40 dollar price point um, when you're considering shipping all the way up to 100 bucks or so on ebay so i'll put links to ebay and amazon in the description of this video if you're looking to check out what's available if you're considering buying one of these dell optiplex 3010s there's some great deals out there with ebay you just kind of have to check back and forth um you know inventory is always updating there's new stuff popping onto ebay every single day Downside to eBay is you are dealing with individual sellers, whereas Amazon, with older products like this, you're typically dealing directly with Amazon. So they're a little bit more expensive, but you have a longer window of return time on there. There's a little bit more recourse if you were to have an issue. With eBay, you're obviously going to um, have a smaller window of uh, return time on there, and you're buying used from an individual versus a big company. So that's pretty much everything that I have to offer here on using the Dell Optiplex 3010 for retro video game emulation. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up on my website, www.retrogamingguy.com, or of course in the comment sections here. Comments sometimes slip by me though, so if you don't get a response, definitely shoot me an email. I try to be on top of my emails 100%. So you know the drill though. If you enjoyed the video, you found this information helpful, smash the like button on the video. Be sure to hit the subscribe button as well to stay in the loop for all future videos here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. And of course, yet again, check me out online, www.retrogamingguy.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.